So today we're going to look at four different edit modes in DaVinci Resolve, as well as the common trimming operations that you can perform in each edit mode. We're going to start off the video with a look at selection mode, and then after that we're going to move on to trim mode, and then after that we're going to move on to another common edit mode, eraser mode. And last but not the least, we're going to wrap up the video with a very quick look at a dynamic mode. So let's get started. Selection mode is a very common edit mode in DaVinci Resolve. And to make sure that you are in the selection mode, I simply press the selection mode logo on top there, or you can use keyboard shortcut A. Uh, and that uh, will make sure that you are automatically in the selection mode. And that's a very you know, useful keyboard shortcut that you want to remember. Now, the first operation we're going to look at is simply moving clips around. And to do that, you just need to select a video clip and you can move it uh, around, move it to a different location, uh, move it to a different part of this uh, video. It's a very simple operation to do, uh, but it's also a very common uh, operation uh, to perform. Uh, now, the next thing well, I, I want to mention is that when you're moving clips around and when there's and there are adjacent uh, video clip and as you're moving into the adjacent video clip, you will effectively overwrite the adjacent clip. So and now when you're moving away from it, uh, it's you are not going to be able to retrieve the overridden clips. So what happens is that you will see that you will have a gap now between the current clip and the adjacent clip. So that's something that you want to definitely keep in mind when you move clips around uh, you know, in, uh, in selection mode. This works differently in trend mode, but in selection mode, this is what happens. Now let's go to another video here. Once again, as you move away from it, you will now have a gap in between uh, the current video clip and the adjacent clip. And now as you move back uh, to the original spot, you will once again have another gap there. So something that you definitely want to keep in mind when you move clips around in the selection mode. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is resizing video clips in selection mode. And to do that, we need to select one of the endpoints in a video clip. And then once you select the endpoint here, you can move, drag it to the right, drag it to the left, and that will effectively resize the duration of the video clip. But one thing I want to mention is that as you resize it and you're resizing into the adjacent clip in this, in this case here, you will once again overwrite the adjacent clip. And the thing also to keep in mind is that now as you try to resize it back or try to scale it back, now you will not be able to retrieve the overridden clips. And so what happens is that you will have a gap now between your current clip and the adjacent clip. And let's go to this video here, right here. Uh, again, you know, you are overriding the adjacent clip when you try to lengthen it. And now when you, uh, let's go to this old end point here again also, let's just over and lengthen this entire video clip. But now when you try to shorten it, now you will see that you have two gaps between the current video and the two adjacent video clips. So something you definitely want to keep in mind uh, when you are doing this in selection mode. The next thing we're going to look at is row edits. Now to do row, row edits, all, you're, all you need to do is to select two endpoints between two adjacent video clips, and then you can move it to the left and move it to the right. This will not affect the overall duration of this video. So what happens is that as you're trying to lengthen one video, the other video will automatically shorten. Uh, in duration. So it's actually quite cool. And this is very helpful when you're trying to adjust the frame uh, at which one video transitions to uh, the other. So in this example, you will see that you will not lose anything. You will not create any gaps or whatsoever. All you're doing is uh, adjusting the duration of both adjacent videos, uh, video clips. And uh, that's a very, uh, can be a very handy operation to perform uh, in depending on your scenario. Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna look at is uh, trend mode, another very common edit mode. And we'll look at the common trimming operations that you can perform in that edit mode. Trim mode is another very, very common edit mode in DaVinci Resolve. And the best part about trim mode is that it really makes up for some of the shortcomings that you saw in selection mode. So it's definitely an edit mode that, uh, that you want to understand. To make sure that you're in the trim mode, you can either uh, just press the trim mode logo that are on the top. It's actually right next to selection mode, or you can use keyboard shortcut T. By simply pressing, uh, pressing T, you automatically switch to the trim mode. 
Okay, so now the first operation, um, trimming operation, uh, we will look at uh, will is something called um, slip and slide. And depending on where your cursor is placed, uh, will perform either slip or slide. So now if we go ahead and right now select a video clip and we move our cursor to the top part of this video, now we're gonna perform something called slip. And what slip is essentially is just keeping the duration intact but replacing this video with another part from this same video. So as you can see that as we drag it left and right or to the right, right now we are replacing it with another part from this video. And as we move it to the left, again it will replace it with another, uh, another, uh, another part from this, uh, this current selection. Uh, but it's not changing uh, the duration. So if you're locked in in terms of duration, this can be very helpful. And all, and all you wanna do is just to kind of replace uh, or play around with which part of the video that you wanna uh, throw in here. And you also get a four up display on top to show you uh, the transition on the left as well as the transition on the right. So this is a, uh, a very cool operation for sure. Now, the next thing we can do is something called slide. And to do that, we're gonna move our cursor to the bottom portion of this video. Now, you also see that the cursor changed shape as well. So it tells you that you are now in the slip mode and you can perform slip. Slip is very much like moving clips around in selection mode. So as you can see that, as we can go ahead and just move it left and right. Uh, we essentially just move it, uh, we can move this clip to a different location. But the cool thing as you notice right here is that when, you're, when we're moving clips to a different location uh, in trip mode, uh, we're not leaving any gaps. We're not, we're not creating any gaps. All the uh, adjacent video clips will automatically adjust in terms of duration in order to maintain a connection to the current selected video clip. So this is a very cool thing, a very big advantage compared to when you move clips around in uh, selection mode. So as you see that the connection will maintain intact, but the duration of the adjacent videos uh, uh, will uh, adjust automatically. And let's go ahead and go, uh, go to another video right here. Again, as you see that when I move it to either, uh, uh, you know, uh, overriding it or move it to move away from the adjacent video, your, uh, you know, the adjacent video will automatically adjust in terms of duration in order to maintain a constant connection to our current uh, video. So that's a very uh, another very cool operation you can perform. It's uh, it's very similar to moving clips around in selection mode, but it has a huge advantage not leaving a gap uh, when you do that in uh, trim mode. Next thing we're gonna look at is ripple edits. Now ripple edits is very much like resizing when you uh, you know in selection mode. So we need to go ahead and select a endpoint from a video clip. But look what happens when we resize uh, or when we do ripple edits uh, in trim mode. See, all the other videos, all the other videos will not uh, comp uh, get compromised in terms of their duration. You will not overridden, override any other uh, any adjacent video, and all the other videos will automatically move uh, in order to maintain a constant connection to your current video. So as you resize it up or size it down, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, all, all your adjacent videos will not get impacted. Um, so that this is why it's called ripple edits. So essentially, it's just resizing in selection mode. But the reason it's called ripple is because uh, no matter uh, no matter how you try to resize it, all the other videos, all the other adjacent videos, will get will automatically shift uh, shift around in order to maintain their own duration and also in order to maintain a constant connection to your uh, existing edit, uh, exist uh, your current video clip. The next trimming operation we're going to look at is row edits. Now row edits edits work exactly the same in selection mode. Uh, so all we need to do is uh, select two endpoints that, uh, that are uh, you know, between two adjacent videos. And once you select that, you can just move it to the right or move it to the left. And uh, the length uh, of each video will automatically adjust uh, depending on where you're moving and the frame at which one video transitions to another will automatically, you, you can also adjust that as well, uh, but you're not changing the overall duration of the sequence. So uh, this is, uh, it works exactly uh, like how you would uh, perform row edits in, um, uh, in selection mode. 
Okay, so now we have looked at some common op trimming operations that we can perform in trim mode. As I mentioned earlier, there's a huge advantage uh, uh, compared to selection mode. And definitely this is something you want to keep in mind uh, as you perform uh, video editing uh, in trim mode. Razor mode allows you to cut out a very specific part of a video and it usually works hand in hand with either selection uh, mode or uh, trim mode. Uh, so it's actually very, very helpful from my experience. Now in order to uh, make sure you're in the razor mode, simply press the razor mode uh, logo on top there or you can use keyboard shortcut B. Uh, it will automatically switch to a razor blade mode. Now the next thing you're gonna do is that as you, as you come down to a, a your a select video, you will notice that the cursor now it looks like a blade. And as you hover over different frames, it, you, it will allow you to preview that frame as well. So it can be very precise. So let's say as we go to this part, this particular frame, if we want to decide that this is the one, we simply need to click, we simply click and now allow you to cut and make a cut there. And then we can come to another frame and make another cut. So now effectively, you just separated that video into three parts. At this point, we can go ahead and switch to, let's say, selection mode, and we can just uh, simply remove this part of the video. And if you don't want uh, the uh, gap there, you can uh, use shift and delete, uh, which is called a ripple delete as well, and that will automatically bridge the gap. Okay, so uh, that's, that's, that's one operation, one thing you can do when you're in razor mode. Another thing you can do is, let's say, uh, we can go ahead and uh, let's do we'll cut another a video. Uh, let's go to this particular video and then maybe cut it here, like in the middle there. Uh, that's good. And uh, once you do that, so now you separate it into two parts, two uh, essentially two parts. Uh, and then let's say we only want to make changes to the first part of this video. We can just go ahead and select it. And then uh, maybe we can go to the Fusion page, uh, or uh, in this case, I want to go to the uh, the color uh, the color grading page. And here, let's say we can just uh, let's just go ahead and move the saturation all the way down to to the bottom. So as you can see right here now, uh, we effectively just changed the first part of this, the, this particular video uh, to a black and white, uh, but the other part of this video is now uh, is still uh, intact. So this is another thing you can do when you're in the razor mode. But the key takeaway here is that razor mode allow you to, to cut out a very specific part of a video and you can perform whatever operations that you want to perform uh, to, that vi to that part of the video. So it's actually a very uh, helpful, a very useful um, edit mode as well. Dynamic mode is the last edit mode we're gonna cover here today, and it works hand in hand with selection or trim mode. And the reason that why I think it's optional is because pretty much everything we do in dynamic mode are already covered in either selection or trim mode. It's just a matter of learning to use the JKL key to perform the same operation, uh, you know, therefore kind of making it more efficient, speeding up the process. It's definitely for more advanced editors. Uh, nonetheless, I'm still going to go ahead and cover and give you an overview of a dynamic mode. Now, the first thing is to make sure we're in dynamic mode. And to do that, we simply need to select a dynamic mode logo on top there, or we can use the keyboard shortcut W. That will make sure that you automatically switch to dynamic mode. And once you're in dynamic mode, you actually have two additional modes. Uh, you can use the keyboard shortcut S to switch between either slip or slide mode. And that is gonna be more relevant when we're in the trend mode. But since now we're in selection mode, it doesn't matter whether you're in the slip or slide uh, dynamic mode. Okay, so now, so in selection mode, uh, we're gonna go ahead uh, and to do uh, you know the same operation we did earlier, but using the JKL key. So now we're gonna try to move, we'll go ahead and move this clip. And to do that, uh, you know, we can just use, we can use J or L to move it to the left or move it to the right. And we can use the K key to stop the motion. So let's go ahead and have a look here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the J key, move it to the left. And then we can use the K key to stop it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the L key to move it to the right. And then use the K key to stop it whenever we feel like we're ready. Now, if you think this is too fast, uh, you know, we can use actually JK or KL, uh, a combination uh, to move it frame by frame. So in this case, I'm using JK to move it to the left frame by frame. 
So, and then I'm gonna move, use KL to move it to the right, again, frame by frame. So it's way more controlled. You can, you don't have to worry about stopping it. Uh, so it's definitely good if you're just starting out using this. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is resizing a video clip using JKL. Again, it just comes down to, you know, selecting the endpoint and then using J uh, and L. Uh, you know, if we use the L key, it's gonna lengthen the video clip. If we use the J key, it's gonna shorten the video clip. And we can use K to stop it at any point. And once again, you know, if you feel like this is moving too fast, this is uh, it's not easy for you to, to, to look at, you can use JK and KL uh, to move uh, frame by frame so that you can resize, you can pretty much yeah, lengthen the video frame by frame or you can shorten it frame by frame. And a good thing is that, that also in this case, the playhead will move along with it. So it's, you can get an instant review of you know, the, the frame that you are, uh, uh, that you are moving to or uh, you know, the new frame that, that, uh, as you resize the video clip. The next thing we're going to look at is doing row edits using JKL again. It's sim it's very much the same. You know, we select the both endpoints between two adjacent video clips, and we just use JKL to to move it to the left or move it to the right. And if you think it's moving too fast, use JK or KL to do uh, you know uh, to move it uh, frame by frame, uh, so that you, you can see that uh, you know. The, and also again, Playhead is moving dynamically, so you can get instant review of your new uh, of the new video. Next, we're gonna look at trim mode, and this is where really the difference, uh, the uh, slip and slide dynamic mode is really become, gonna be more relevant. So uh, we, we can use the, key, uh, the S key to switch between slip and slide dynamic mode, and it will really dictate kind of what we're gonna do. So now we're gonna go ahead and do slip, and we're just gonna use the S key to switch to slip mode. And once we're in the slip mode, we can just use JKL key, uh, again, J uh, will move the video to the left and L will move it to the right and we can stop anytime using uh, the K key. Uh, and if you're thinking that now using JKL keys once again too fast, we can always use the JK and uh, KL uh, combination uh, to move it fr frame by frame. And uh, it works just the same. Uh, but now it's uh, doing it frame by frame, so it's more uh, controlled. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to look at is uh, slide mode. And we're going to go ahead and switch using S key to slide mode. And once we're in the slide mode, and then we can go ahead and use J and L to move it uh, to the left or move it, uh, or slide it to the right or uh, left. And you can use a, a K key to stop it at any time. And once again, if you think this is going too fast, uh, you can always use JK and KL uh, to uh, slide it frame by frame. So, and the cool thing is that the playhead will also, uh, you know, move along with it. Will change uh, uh, dynamically move uh, along with it, uh, so you can get an instant preview, instant review of your new video. All right. So the next thing we're going to look at is uh, resizing uh, the in a dynamic in a trim mode uh, and using JKL. And once again, you know, once we have the select this endpoint. We can just use the J and L to, uh, you know, uh, either lengthen it or shorten it, and uh, without, you know, compromising uh, the duration of other video clips. And you can always use K just to stop it. And now, if you're thinking this is going too fast, once again, we can use J K uh, that, uh, to move it, uh, you know, frame by frame. Uh, in this case, we're using J K, or you can we use a K L. Uh, to shorten it in this case. Um, so once again, it's doing it frame by frame. Uh, so this is more controlled. Okay, so now next is row edits. Row edits in dynamic mode, uh, dynamic trim mode, again, works exactly the same. Uh, once we select both edit points, we can just use the JKL key uh, to move it uh, left and right, uh, and you, uh, key, use the K key to stop it anytime. If you think it's moving too fast, you can just use the JK or KL key. Uh, to move it frame by frame. So in this case, when we're doing row edits, when you move it frame by frame, you can see much better uh, kind of at what point you want to stop. Um, so, okay, so I think this is it, guys, uh, for dynamic mode. Uh, this is just a basic overview, and I hope this helps, and I'll see you in the next video.